that's one thing about the Big 12 that people aren't talking about with this basketball team is everyone's like, oh, shit. <laughs> They're going to the Big 12, and, and rightfully so, because we were talking before the show, like, yeah, these MAC players and these mid-major, low-mid-major guys that Bobby's getting have worked in the past where they come in and they, you know, they come from, Mar- like, Marion, like, he was he was good, he wasn't yeah. great, but he was good, uh, and that worked, but it was a MAC to the pack. It wasn't a MAC to the Big 12, and that's going to be a little scary, yeah. but the good thing about the Big 12 is maybe now that you're playing in this Premier Basketball Conference, and as long as you compete a little bit, right, you should be able to retain more players than not. And yeah, and 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 that all goes to say, like it's 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 a lot harder to retain players now, and that's kind of the topic of the show. Like it's not just an ASU problem. The amount of players entering the portal is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so you just you just have to hope that you retain more players than not. And and the the reason why I bring this up now is when I was talking about the the amount of scholarships. Let's say Frankie Collins comes back because again, it's. It's not completely out of the question. Like the things that I've heard, it's not. It's not like he's completely gone. He he said he he wouldn't put ASU back in his Final Four if he didn't think that he that he, he's not the type to lie about no. that. No. So if you bring Frankie back, you now have three, four, maybe sometimes four of your starters. If you consider Kamari in and out, you've you've three starters for sure coming back, mm-hmm. and you only have two scholarships remain to fill. Like that is, that is that is insane. If, yeah. Like this early, and and again, like that that is such a big if because he was he was your he was your best player. He was your he was your engine last year. So you, you would hope that happens. He was one of two guys that at the beginning of the offseason we said if you lose him, it's it's a really big deal. Yeah. Everybody else, it was like okay, it would suck, but it's just the way yeah. that it goes, and it is what it but is. Even, but even if he doesn't, after this this transfer in Bashir, you only need to fill three spots right now. Again, people could leave uh, for sure. Um, and yeah, an update on Frank, as JJ says, he's visiting TCU this weekend. Yeah. It ain't looking good, boys. Yeah, he did. He tweeted two to three days ago saying, hey, Twitter, dot, dot, dot. And that scared me a little bit. <laughs> but but I, I know he's visiting TCU this weekend. Yeah. Like it, that, that, that is one of the schools that, that we said early on was it was probably uh, one, a good fit, but two, one of the most likely options. I think it's between TCU, ASU and SDSU. And, and look, listen, if if he decides to go somewhere else because the NIL money isn't there, like it, it is what it is. That's just I, I know that it's the nature of it. Yeah, I know Donald won't be happy, uh, but we'll we'll still be no matter what, like not personally rooting against the success. Yeah. And Donald makes another point in the chat says, FYI, Kansas spent over four million for basketball NIL last year. And that also goes with, I believe, Mark Pope, who's the new head coach of Kentucky, already has from one NIL donor four million dollars. Yeah, I know That's... four million dollars. Right. So. Listen, we're, we're at a point where there's there's no chance in hell that ASU will get on a level of Kentucky, right? But just to give a scale of things, right? Like Kansas, $4 million overall. Kentucky, $4 million from one donor to rebuild a new program. Like, if you are a, a, a college basketball player, or as Clint points out in the chat, hi, Clint, an agent. Yeah. And somebody has this influx of cash and they're willing to, quote, overpay for yeah. you. And you don't know if you're going to go to the NBA. Yeah. Like it, it is almost impossible yeah. to turn that down. And so with ASU, you're just going to have to look in the mirror a little bit until they get their money up. Got to get yeah. their cash up. If we want to put silver lining on this with like Frankie going to a different school, the silver lining would be he is without a doubt, without a doubt, wherever he ends up, that is an ASU. He's going to be getting paid more than he was at ASU. And mm-hmm. he was already ASU's highest paid athlete you need support and the fact that he's even considering coming back shows that bobby hurley's worth three hundred thousand dollars or whatever the difference is that he's going to be making at a different school um and so that's a good sign what needs to happen and and the (laughs) Jonathan pope thing's insane what needs nuts what needs to happen is you need a guy like nap lawrence who is ASU's biggest booster, or one of the ASU's biggest boosts, outwardly showing booster. When Kenny Dillingham was announced as the head coach at ASU, at that press conference, this introductory press conference, I remember being there and Naplorn stood up and pledged a million dollars right there, right there, <laughs> immediately. That's what you need for ASU. You need yeah. more boosters like that because that'll help you retain some guys and they need to specifically be for basketball. You don't have that. And, and and that just goes with the the building the culture that Kenny's established and 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 hopefully that can help Bobby and I know Bobby's getting on the right track and, the, and it's not just on him to do it I know the whole basketball program and the, and the NIL department at Arizona State is getting on the right track but that's what you need yeah that's really what you need. Yeah.